Hey there everyone, welcome back to the Dan Cave and welcome to February 2024 on the bench. So it's, uh, well, it's the start of February. So as is somewhat usual and traditional now, it's uh, it's bench update time. So I'm going to cover the usual things that I cover in a bench update. So I'll have a look at what's been built in January, uh, what's been bought recently, what's in progress and just general kind of news which i might cover now i might cover a bit later who knows it i tend to do it when i remember it and a lot of the time i don't remember it whatsoever so there we go uh so yeah so welcome back to the channel uh of course if you're new here if you're not a subscriber please hit the subscribe button it costs you nothing uh, and if you like the video give it a like as well uh, and feel free to leave a comment if you want as well. So there we go. We're back Back with another bench update with a bit of a look back at mainly what's happened in January uh, So a couple of kits have been built One very pleased with one not as much uh, Bought stuff didn't really buy anything but a little bit of news on on the disaster from last month kind of uh, yeah, actually it is. It is. It's good news from from last month's disaster, uh, but we get to that in due course. Uh, and then there's the in progress stuff. So there is a couple of kits in progress at the moment, uh, and we'll also get to that in due progress, in due time, a little bit later. So, so yeah, ge general news. General news. What's been happening? So it's been a nice start to the year. Obviously winter helps, tend to be not outside as much, so a little bit more time at the bench. Uh, managed to make a little bit of progress on, on a couple of kits. Uh, so got a couple of kits finished. I think they were probably started the back end of last year, but plenty of time to get them kind of progress to finish throughout the month as well. So, so that's been really nice. Uh, been able to start a few other things and that's, that's what I'll cover in the in progress section as well. So let's, uh, yeah, let's finish the intro there and let's move to uh, what's been built. So then what's been built? Uh, so not my usual kind of look down point. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually, I'm going to stick some pictures up. I think it's, uh, yeah, I'll stick some pictures up of what's been finished. So for first up that's been finished was the Fujimi 20th scale uh, Lotus 97T, which was Air Senna's first race winning car uh, in the wonderful GPS scheme. Start photos. Uh, to, yeah, so, so pick this kit up a while back. Uh, being a Fujimi kit. Didn't include the tobacco sponsorship, so I managed to get a set of TB decals to do the uh, John Player special sponsorship. Uh, a little bit more about them as I as I kind of talk over. Uh, so yeah, to, uh, I'll be honest, I, I, I relatively low expectations of the kit. I, I I think Fujimi kits can be hit and miss, uh, but I'll be honest, this Formula One kit is an absolute cracker of a kit. Really enjoyed it. Uh, the detail on the parts is brilliant. Some of them are very, very fragile because they are modelled at very small scales, so they're not kind of oversimplified in some areas. But that means they are fragile and easy to break. And there was a few breakages along the way, but nothing that you know wasn't fixable. Uh, level of detail on the engine, the radiators, you know, all that kind of stuff, uh, absolutely spot on. A little bit disappointing, no seat belts are included. Uh, kind of thing for Formula 1 kits is such a prominent part. There wasn't even a decal for the seat belts, and it's such a prominent part. I think that's something they, they could easily correct. However, I had a set of Tamiya uh, 20th scale decals which went in, uh, not decals, uh, 20th scale buckles, and used some ribbon that I had, and they worked absolutely perfectly. Uh, so, the, so the bodywork itself was all primed in UMP black. Uh, and then I used X18 semi gloss black, uh, and then decals were applied. Now, the TB decals, when I've used them before, it's basically been an uncut sheet of decals, so you have to cut everyone out. This time around, it looked like all the decals had been had been 
were separate. There, there was a clear demarcation line. Uh, but they weren't completely separated. It was like the clear film was scored. So they didn't quite separate easily. But then some would. So it was a little bit of a kind of odd compromise. But I think as long as you as long as you're aware of it, they are workable. I still think you basically just need to trim them out anyway, so I'm not quite sure if if the if the scoring really adds any value. Uh, but other than that, the decals worked absolutely fine. Uh, so they went down, and then it was a case of 2K, which was Gravity Spain 2K. And I don't know if you heard that, but it was a very noisy two-stroke scooter it just went past my house, probably in a cloud of blue smoke. Uh, and yeah, so Gravity Spain 2K went down and then the bodywork was set aside for a reasonable period of time. Then it was onto the chassis, running gear, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so lots of semi-gloss black, uh, lots of alclad metallics around the engine, added some harnesses for the uh, for the ignition uh, leads, a little bit of bare metal foil for the heat shield as well. Uh, and then the monocoque got coated in scale motorsport carbon, which I think looks looks absolutely spot on. Gives a beautiful kind of matte satin contrast to the 2K clear coat. So, uh, yeah, it is nice to pose the kit with the, the bodywork off. Which leads me on to the one kind of disappointing bit of this kit. The bodywork just doesn't really fit. I think once you package up the radiators and the turbo and the exhaust, they are such a kind of tricky fit. That it just ends up failing the bodywork and it doesn't quite all line up together. But nonetheless, you can pose it open. Looks quite good like that anyway. So so there we go. That was kit number one finished off last month and the first kit finished off 2024. So, uh, so that will be a video build at some point in the future. So, so kit number two. Kit number two was uh, the Micromere 144th scale Vickers Valiant. Now, on the channel, if you go back far enough, I built the Great Wall Hobby Victor. I then built the Great Wall Hobby Vulcan. And at the time, Great Wall Hobby didn't do uh, the Valiant. So I went and got this Micromere one, which is a short run injection kit. Uh, and of course, as soon as I started it, Great Wall Hobby basically announced that this year they'll be releasing the Valiant. So that kind of pulled the mojo out a little bit. On top of that, so that was the base code. on top of that, sorry, just keeping the PC from going to sleep. Uh, so on top of that, just being a short run injection kit, the build process was difficult, lots of filler, lots of fit issues. There was some photo etch in the kit, it didn't really fit very well. Some of the smaller parts were just a bit pointless and, and far too fiddly. Uh, I think just my loss of kind of interest because knowing Great Wall Hobbies are bringing one out, which will, will definitely be a far superior kit, just meant I didn't really put in, I suppose, the hours and time. But I got it together, painted it up in Hataka Anti-Flash White. Uh, and then it got kind of to the decal stage. The decals from Micromere were awful. They basically fell apart. So the ones that were remaining, I sprayed in liquid decal film. That seemed to save them a bit, but just they wouldn't adhere very well. So there was a lot of swearing at this particular kit during the decal stage. So once that, once that was done, gave it a satin coat. Uh, I think I used Windsor Newton Gallery as a satin coat. Again, that kind of fought me the whole way as well. Uh, and then moved on to the weathering stage and... I'll, well, let's roll the final video anyway. So let's let's roll the video and see what it looks like. Uh, so got onto that weathering stage uh, because it's satin coated. I thought, eh, I'll go. I'll go with water-based washes this time. I've used them before. I've used uh, UMP water water-based or clay-based washes before. Uh, now you do get a little bit of staining that can add to the effect. This time round. It just it just didn't work. I I think I think it was just the clear coat wasn't good enough. I don't think the paint finish was smooth enough. And just everything just meant I ended up with a lot of staining. 
uh, kind of worked with it, used some oils to try and bring it back, used some different washes to try and bring it back. But ultimately, I, the weathering just, just didn't work for me. Uh, so got it to the finish, didn't bin it, but got it to the finish. And it sits on the shelf with the other ones and it'll get replaced by a great well, hobby one at some point. So there we go. That's the what's been completed in uh, January. So one win. One, not so much of a win, but you know, it's the fun of modeling, isn't it? But how's ever? There we go. So that's what's been finished. So what's been bought? Well, nothing. Nothing. I bought some a few bits and pieces like detail upsets uh, for the Audis. A couple of detail upsets for the BMWs I got. That's pretty much it. I, I didn't need anything else. But what I did. So if you remember last month. There was a tale of the disaster with the Bell Kit Citroen. Uh, where it basically melted in brake fluid. So contact the kit said, look, you know, unfortunately, this has happened unexpected. Lots of people use brake fluid to strip uh, car bodies. This one stripped the paint, but also melted it, melted the plastic itself. So uh, just to let you guys know, is this unusual? You know, I'm trying to understand exactly what went wrong. So, so they got back to me, said. So in their kind of obviously customer support, they didn't have any info. They said they could go back to the factory, uh, but it'd take a lot of kind of digging about. So I said, well, that's fair enough. So in with their email, they also threw in kind of the offer to say, well, you know, can we send you a replacement body and decals? And, you know, so I replied back to him and said, well, you know, that that's a very generous offer. However, unfortunately, because it was all the body parts, it's parts off the other sprues as well. So I'd need... This sprue, this sprue, the body, etc., etc. And within the day, they kind of emailed me back and said, uh, "So you want sprue X, Y, Z, and a body and decals?" And I replied, "Yes." And you know, if that's your offer of sending me that stuff, that's incredibly generous. And well, you know, lo and behold, within I don't know what you call it, a week or so, a few days. This turned up in the post. So this is a brand new body. And all the other sprues that I needed uh, for all the other bits turned up from Bell Kits. So absolutely top-notch customer service from Bell Kits. Uh, excuse the rustling. Uh, yeah, absolutely over the moon that they were willing to do that. Send me a decal sheet as well. Uh, so that was very, very generous of them. So thank you very much, Bell Kits, for that. Uh, yeah. What more can I say? You can't really fault kind of top-notch service like that. So, uh, so yeah, so that's what's been bought slash acquired. Yeah, let's leave it at that. Oh yeah, for uh, what's in progress, let's uh, head on over to the bench and have a look at the things that are in progress. So, off over we go. Come on. So first up in progress is the new new Audi A4 uh, British Touring Car. So this has been, so this is the stage been 2 k uh, It's been curing for well over a week now I think. Uh, so this should be absolutely fine to handle and uh, even start flatting process. Uh, so yeah, just primed in UMP black primer, then given a base coat of uh, the silver paint for this car from Zero Paints. Uh, decals, bit of a panel line wash, and then Gravity Spain 2K, and then set aside to cure. In addition, and since then, I've kind of cracked on with the chassis, interior, running gear, all that kind of stuff. Uh, running gear itself is pretty much complete. Uh, brakes with the photo etch from the detail set, which I have. A little bit of carbon fiber decking on the underside as well. Uh, so yeah, so well pleased with the progress on this. Next up, it'll be starting to work on the interior tub. All the parts for it are primed. Need to start figuring out paint schemes, that kind of stuff. Uh, and whether I'm gonna add any additional details. So that is well in progress and uh, 
speeding along. Uh, no real issues with the kit so far. Uh, I think the only thing I've mentioned is a big thank you to uh, Thomas over at uh, Building on a Budget Models because uh, he did mention in a comment about this piece of the roll cage uh, not being in the instructions and he was spot on. It was on one of the sprues and it's not called it in the instructions. So uh, yeah, so that was a, a, a good catch from him and uh, thank you for mentioning it. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure I would have uh, completely missed the part and probably thrown it in the bin and not noticed it was gone. So number two in progress, uh, and I'm trying to remember was how far in progress this was last month. So this is the Ravel 24 scale Ferrari California. So this has been 2K. Uh, and it's been 2 k for weeks, so it's it's completely cured at this stage. Uh, it needs its polishing to get rid of a few dust spots, but that's sat to one side as other things have progressed. Uh, but that was primed in UMP's pink primer. Uh, I think as I explained last month, my original plan was this was going to be done in... Uh, Gravity Ferrari Azuro California, I think the colour is, but the metallic particles look way too big. So I decided no, because I've got a detail set for this, I didn't want it looking crappy, so I said no, I'll just go with the classic Rosso Corso. So I went with that red from uh, Gravity Spain. Left Cure and then 2K, uh, Gravity Spain as well. So 2K went absolutely fine. A couple of dust spots. But other than that, I think that clear coat looks uh, absolutely spot on. Uh, and I think looking at my reflection in it, I think it's uh, one of the best clear coats I've done in a while. So very happy with that. In addition, on that kit, I've also uh, basically done all the clean up. Of everything else so everything else has been pretty much cleaned up uh, de-chromed the chrome bits as best I could uh, and then everything has been kind of packaged up into little sub assemblies for priming at some point but it's it's pretty much uh, pretty much ready to process I think and start working on the kind of chassis running gear interior and all that kind of stuff and of course as mentioned uh, I do have the uh, Hobby Design PE set for it, which includes lots of items like brake discs, all the grills, front grill, radiator covers, uh, windscreen wipers, various interior parts as well, and seat belts, uh, seat belt buckles by the look of it as well. So uh, yeah, so a very nice detail set, which I didn't even know was in this kit when I bought it second hand, and it was in the box. So a very pleasant surprise. So that is the, uh, that's all that's in progress at the moment, so let's not flog a dead horse or some other saying. Yeah, and let's go back to me for uh, some more random thoughts. So yeah, so there we have it, that's the built, bought, in progress, bell kits update. All the usual kind of stuff so big thank you uh to everyone who watched the most recent video so I popped out a video during the week it was my top five money saving tips for modeling just simple little things that can just save a little bit of money eat away at the margins because modeling can be you know a particularly expensive hobby at times and these were things that just save a little bit of your hard hard earned wedge uh that video for some reason Compared to all my other videos, it's views and watch time has just been maybe not stratospheric or exponential, but you know, comparatively speaking, it's been hugely successful for some reason. Uh, shot to 50 likes, I think it's up around 150 likes at this stage. So a uh, big thank you to everyone who's watched. Really appreciate that people have watched it, really appreciate that people have liked it. 
really appreciate the comments as well some good ideas from people in there as well about things that can be done to save a little bit of money while modeling uh <laughs> yeah well, but one of the ideas i really liked which is used to bottle tops off of beers as uh, little palettes for super glue and you get to drink a beer as well really like that great idea other random things people put in as well uh <laughs> Good money saving tip build what you've got and stop buying more kits so uh yeah it's possibly why today's camera angle is not showing everything that's above my head it's the ever-growing stash of kits uh so yeah it's a big thank you to everyone who's watched it uh yeah really pleased with that hopefully this video will be just as successful R regardless i think that video is kind of help boost the kind of viewing numbers and the subscriber numbers as well so uh yeah so that's been that's been really good so big thank you to everyone uh and i think that's pretty much it for me that's uh it's all the kind of regular stuff and regular goings on so big thank you to everyone once again for sitting here painstakingly following me on this this journey of a bench update thank you for watching if you're not a subscriber, of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It, it's completely free. Uh, and uh, if you like the video, pop a like. And if you have a comment, feel free to leave a comment. But I'm going to shut up and leave it there because uh, this video is probably long enough already. So thank you all. And I'll see you very, very soon for whatever's next on the channel. So thanks a lot and bye bye for now.